40 years ago, Aintree was on its uppers and the Grand National flirting with the endangered species list. The National was in desperate need of a miracle and it got one in the shape of red rum, not the first saviour to emerge from a lowly stable and change the world. You couldn't make him up, nor Ginger McCain, the wonderfully punchy and big-hearted character who trained him from behind his second-hand car showroom in the back streets of Southport, just up the coast from Aintree. No manicured grass gallops for this horse. McCain worked his pride and joy on the beach through the long, raw winters, dreaming ever of the National. And the 1973 Grand National, when Red Rum collared Crisp close home, is on every short list of jumping's most magnificent races. Crisp was a champion chaser over two miles, and for him the National was like a 400 meter runner stepping up to do the marathon. But he maintained a merciless gallop, throwing in soaring stags leaps at the fearsome fences as he powered ever further clear. And Richard Pittman over that one on Crispin. What a fantastic ride he's having. I can't remember a horse so far ahead in the Grand National at this stage. It was pulsating exhibition stuff. But Nemesis was stalking him. Crispin's getting very tired. And Red Rum is pounding after him. Red Rum was almost the villain of the piece that day as sporting hearts went out to the heroic runner-up who was trying to give the winner 23 pounds. He's got to get up. Red Rum is going to win the National. And at the line, Red Rum has just snatched it from Chris. The race smashed the record time that had stood since Golden Miller's victory in 1934. But the villain turned out to be the National's greatest ever hero. Twelve months on, Red Rum returned to Aintree and put up a mighty weight-carrying effort to defy 12 stone and as dual national winner, his legend was now on a mighty roll. Red Rum finished second in both 1975 and 76, and was 12 years old when he arrived for his fifth national in 1977, with Ginger McCain telling all and sundry that his beloved rummy was as good as ever. Few believed him. No horse had ever won three grand nationals. It was regarded as beyond the realms of the possible. What unfolded that unparalleled entry afternoon was quintessential sporting heaven. History on the hoof. They're winning him home now, the 12-year-old Red Rum. It's hat off and a tremendous reception you've never heard by like it at Liverpool. Red Rum wins the national. Red Rum saved the race he made his own and ensured that future generations would have their grand nationals too. He lies buried by the winning post. No higher honour possible. And the irrepressible Ginger McCain had by no means finished with the race he'd loved since boyhood. In 2004, he won the national yet again, and the 12-year-old Ambley House came from miles back to give Ginger his fourth national 27 years on from Rummy's final try. And the Martel Cognac Grand National goes again to Ginger McCain. Ginger retired and handed over the reins to his son Donald, who also has Aintree coursing through his veins and lived up to his Grand National pedigree two years ago when sending Ballabriggs out to win the world's most famous race. Son of his father indeed. If you want a monument to Red Rum and Ginger McCain, it is the race itself. Across the world's continents and time zones today, the Grand National will leap languages and cultures as hundreds of millions take 10 minutes out of their lives to watch a horse race which has no rival in terms of spectacle. Why? Because there is nothing else on God's good earth quite like it.